Hello families, today we'd like to talk with you about the 6th to 7th grade math course selection process for determining math placement for the next school year. There have been a few changes in both the courses and the placement criteria and we would like to share them with you today. So what we'll be doing is we'll we will be reviewing the available 7th grade courses, the progression for each course from middle school through high school, We'll review how a student qualifies for each course, go over a little bit about the orleans hanna Algebra Prognostic Placement Test. We'll talk about the Algebra, key, algebra 1 Keystone Exam. And then if you come to the Parent Information Session, we'll have some 7th grade teachers on hand, a middle, middle school guidance counselor on hand for a question and answer session. So the goal of our placement process is to ensure that all students are placed in the most appropriate 7th grade mathematics course. Next year, there will be three courses. It's important to mention that the courses highlighted in yellow are new courses that will be implemented in seventh grade starting in the fall of 2016. For those parents with older children, you will recall that we currently teach math seven in seventh grade. Pre-algebra is currently taught in eighth grade and algebra one in ninth grade. However, as part of the implementation of the sixth grade curriculum using the GoMath program, the seventh grade math teachers performed a vertical alignment of the seventh grade math standards and the sixth grade curriculum. After careful consideration, including standard alignment and data analysis, we determined that our students are ready for the pre-algebra course in seventh grade. This is an exciting change because it will prepare more students for Algebra 1 in the in eighth grade and ultimately lead to more options for math and science courses at the high school. We will be looking at a model where the majority of the students will begin pre-algebra in seventh grade, which was previously an eighth grade course, and opening up Algebra 1 to a wider population of students from about 5 to 8 percent in years past to about 20 percent moving forward. So we're going to take a look at the different course progressions, but it's important to know that no matter what course progression your child ends up in, there are different paths to follow. So if they end up in pre-algebra 5.0, they have a chance to catch up along the way. If they end up in pre-algebra 6.0, they have a chance to catch up along the way. The first course we're going to talk about is this first, this Algebra 1 course, and we're going to look at the progression for Algebra 1. If your student qualifies for Algebra 1, in seventh grade. We're looking at students who are developmentally ready in seventh grade based on criteria which we will later explain. They will have the following course progression. They will then have geometry in eighth grade, algebra two in ninth grade, pre-calculus in tenth grade, AP Calc in eleventh grade, and AP Calc two in twelfth grade. It's important to note that in order for these students to fulfill the math grade graduation requirement, they have a math and science of um, seven courses. They will still be required to complete at a minimum three math courses after eighth grade, which means at a minimum, that's if they take four science and three math, they will need to complete these three starred courses in order to graduate. The other thing that's important to note is they will be taking the um, Algebra Keystone exam as well in seventh grade. Now the majority of the students will qualify for Pre-Algebra 6.0 and there's two course progressions for Pre-Algebra 6.0. For students placed in their course um, and depending on their level of readiness there'll be two course progressions. If a student de demonstrates strong pre-algebra skills in seventh grade, then they'll be recommended for one year, the one year algebra course in eighth grade, and then move on to geometry, algebra two, pre-calc, and AP calc. Um, if, however, a child is struggling when they go to pre-algebra in seventh grade, and they need a little bit more time. So this is for students who need more time to develop a stronger foundation of the algebra skills and their abstract reasoning skills. They will be placed into an Algebra 1 course that will address both Algebra 1 Keystone Anchors over a two-year period of time. So they'll be in Pre-Algebra next year 
in seventh grade. And then if they're struggling in this course, then they'll be placed into two years of Algebra 1 Part 1, Algebra 1 Part 2. These course names are still waiting to be defined. And then they'll go into Geometry, Algebra 2, and Pre-Calc. And they will take their, al their uh, keystones in ninth grade. Students placed in al Pre-Algebra 5.0 will also have two course progressions depending on their readiness level. For students who develop strong pre-algebra skills over the course of two years, they will be placed into one year, a one-year Algebra 1 course in ninth grade. So the students in pre-algebra 5.0 placed in there, they'll be in pre-algebra in seventh grade, they will take algebraic concepts in eighth grade, and then if they develop strong readiness, they will be able to go and catch up in ninth grade and be in an Algebra 1 course and take the keystone in Algebra in ninth grade. And then they will go into Geometry, Algebra 2, and Pre-Calc. However, if the students are still struggling in Pre-Algebra 5.0, they will be placed in Pre-Algebra in seventh grade in the 5.0 course. They will have Algebraic Concepts in eighth grade. They will take a two-part Algebra course, one in ninth grade and part two in tenth grade and then they will have Geometry in 11th and Algebra 2 in 12th, again taking their keystone in 10th grade then. So to recap, your child will be placed into one of the courses above based on readiness criteria. So they'll either go into Algebra 1, and we're looking at, based on our data, about 18 to 20 percent of the students ending up in there. But the bulk of the students ending up in this pre-Algebra 6.0, which will eventually have two paths. If they're successful, they move on to Algebra 1 the next year. If they need a little bit more help, their, algebra, their course will be split up into two years. And then another small percentage of students who need extra support mastering the concepts over time will go into pre-Algebra 5.0. So previous year's placement criteria included unit test assessment scores, PSSA scores, keystone proficiency projections, an algebra prognostic, and a geometry prognostic assessment. This year will include the same, except we've added their unit 2 test score to add more current data, and have eliminated the geometry prognostic, which only a few students took if they scored well on the algebra prognostic. These data points and cut scores were determined by examining past data trends and new PSSA cut scores. Our goal was to ensure that all students are placed in a course that's developmentally appropriate based on past performance while providing a stimulating and challenging learning progression. Using the new cut scores and rubric above, we anticipate based on the data that we, current data that we have, that about 18 to 20 percent of the students will end up in that Algebra 1 path, with the majority of the students ending up in Pre-Algebra 6.0, which used to be sequenced for 8th grade, and the Pre-Algebra 5.0 course will be for the students who need additional support, intervention, and time over two years mastering those Pre-Algebra and Algebraic concept skills. The unit tests are 6th grade assessment that assess the curriculum being taught. Your student has most likely already taken Unit 1 test and will be taking the Unit 2 assessment sometime late January, early February. So far, over well over 350 students have already fallen into the two-point category rubric above for Unit 1 test score. The PSSA scores come from their fifth grade PSSA, and the cut points listed above have been adjusted based on those new cut scores that the state had put out. And based on that data, we already have almost 200 students receiving two points on the rubric above. In the next few slides, we'll discuss the Algebra Prognostic Assessment and the Keystone Proficiency Projection. The orleans hanna Algebra Prognostic Test will be taken sometime in February. The important thing to remember here is that this is a self-taught assessment. So you can see it's a predictor of achievement, but also successful acquisition of mathematical concepts. It's a 50-question time test. It's divided into five sections. And each subtest contains a self-taught lesson and test. And self-taught is really important for ready readiness. A student who needs extra support to answer the questions won't necessarily have the skills needed for the demands of Algebra 1 in seventh grade. Because the students haven't taken the algebra prognostic, we can really only use previous year's year data trends to predict the number of students that will fall in each category in the rubric. 
About 80 students last year scored above 45 points, which gave them a 2 on the rubric, and about 104 students scored 40 to 45 points, which gave them a 1. So if we go back, and even if um, all the students the, with um, the numbers we were talking about, even if your child scored two points all here and still only gets one here, you can see they'll still be placed into Algebra 1. And then as you can see, the pre-algebra is only 0 to 2 points. So again, the majority of the students going in here. The Algebra 1, when the students are finished Algebra 1, they have to take a Keystone exam in order to graduate. So beginning with the class of 2017, students must demonstrate proficiency on the Algebra 1, Biology, and Literature Keystone exams to graduate. The Algebra 1 Keystone exam is an end of the course exam that's giving, given to any student taking Algebra 1 as their math course. So if your child qualifies for Algebra 1, 1 next year, they'll be taking the Keystone exam. If they move on to it the following year, that's when they'll take their Keystone exam and so forth. The state also uses a data formula to determine a Keystone proficiency projection percentage. So if we go back to this slide here, your, your current sixth grader, over the course of three years, a Keystone proficiency projection um, was calculated from the state. And so if I go back to this, um, the state uses the stated formula to determine their percentage, the projection. Based on this year's current sixth grade class, the current one we have, over 490 students will receive two points on the rubric. So you can see our students are doing really well with that. So to review, here we go. We're going to look at the Unit 1 test score, Unit 2 test score, their 5th grade PSSA score, their Keystone proficiency projection, and the students will take an Algebra prognostic score. So to this point, we have Unit 1 already finished. PSSA was 5th grade. Keystone was 5th grade. We, that came out this year. And so the students still need to take Unit 2 and the Algebra prognostic. And again, we're looking at about 18 to 20 percent falling into being ready to take Algebra 1 next year as opposed to about 5 to 8 percent in years past with the majority of the students falling in this pre-algebra 6-0 class which used to be taught in 8th grade and then the students needing extra support would fall into this pre-algebra 5-0 course. We will be holding a parent informational night, which you'll see attached to the email that comes with this video. So feel free, if you feel like you need additional questions answered, feel free to come on out to our parent night. If you have any questions regarding middle school course selection and the sequence through middle school and high school, please contact Ketty Kaminsky. For questions regarding the math placement rubric, please contact Stacy Mosley at above. For questions specific to your child's score and data, please contact the school. And then final course recommendations for all subjects will be coming out in early spring, so you'll be notified in the spring as to their final course selections. Again, if you have any questions, please feel, to feel free to contact one of the above. Thank you.